Hey guys, this is Jan for Chess24. In this video, I'm gonna take a look at a match that has recently finished in China. The Chinese Chess Federation has started organizing matches for most of their top players whenever they can. We've seen matches by Ding Liren, Wei Yi, Hu Yifan, and this time it's Yu Yang Yi's turn. He's facing the experienced Russian Grandmaster Alexander Grishuk. Here we see the two Yu Yang Yi, 23 years old, already broke the 2750 barrier at the time of starting this match. He's 2753, but might be the least well known of the young Chinese stars after Wei Yi and Ding Liren. Alexander Grishuk has been around for quite a while now. The three time Blitz World Champion remains one of the strongest players in the world, 2761. 33 years of age, he's not exactly old, but very, very experienced. I believe it is mm, fair to say that the first two games were not particularly exciting. It's a four games match total, and the first two ended in draws reasonably quickly. In the first one, Grishuk faced the Petrov, not a surprise, this is the opening. There's preferred by most of the Chinese top players, where Yi plays it, Yu Yang Yi plays it, Li Chao, um, Wang Yue, you name them, they've played the Petro. Grishuk in this game tries a trendy line. For many, many years, Knight C3 was the main line, but recently people have started shifting back to these positions. And after Bishop E7, he plays Knight BD2, where in the past year, Black was facing some problems. But Yu Yang Yi is well prepared for it, follows a game he played against Anish Giri, Knight d6, intending to go bishop f5. After some shadow boxing, black managed to solve all his problems. Bunch of pieces were exchanged, and the game ended peacefully. This is the final position, I believe. White can't really win a pawn, because queen d5 is met by queen a4, queen d8, knight f8, queen c7, queen a1 check. And black gets his pawn back. Therefore, not much to play for. If you think this game was dull, then... Look at game number two. Grishuk with the black pieces. Maybe surprised Yu Yang Yi in the opening by going for this g6, c6 setup. I'm not sure. The symmetrical Grunfeld, as they call it, is very solid for black. And Yu Yang Yi tries to meet it with b3. But after the very direct reaction, dc, b, c, c5, this has been played a lot. He seemed to be surprised in this position by the black move, knight to c6. Queen b6 used to be the main line here. But knight c6 has been put on the map quite a while ago. Giri played it against Vladimir Kramnik in a high-profile game. So a bit of a surprise that this is a bit of a surprise for Yu Yang Yi, who reacts with the kind of meek e3. In prior games, people had played knight takes c6, b takes c, and then knight d2. Also didn't achieve much. But the problem with e3 is that black can just play bishop d7, develop his arguably worst piece, and then recapture on c6 with the bishop, thereby solving all of his problems immediately. And indeed, the players agreed to a draw, I believe, after bishop takes c6, because there's not much to play for. However, after these two games, things would heat up in round number three. Grishuk again with the white pieces, and it is the Petrov again. But Grishuk changes gears, goes for the move knight to c3 this time around. This has been played a lot over the last 10 years, but mainly the Chinese players have found a way to deal with it. Because when this line started becoming fashionable, black was typically castling king's, king's side. This has not been refuted, but most of the Chinese players prefer the plan, along with Anish Giri, who should also be mentioned. He's played this a lot as well. But to go knight c6, bishop e6, queen d7, and then castle queen side at an appropriate moment. And black has achieved very decent results with the setup in recent years. Grishuk does come armed with a fresh idea. This queen d7 is very common. h4 as well. The point of h4 is people used to play knight g5, but then black can take if he wants, go f6, and set up a very, very solid formation that's hard to break. Therefore, h4 is hinting at the idea of knight g5, but intending to recapture on g5 with a pawn, let's say, on castles. I think here knight d4 is a better move, but just to illustrate the idea, knight g5, if you take now, then hg would be a bit awkward for black, because this is a weak pawn. h4, therefore black goes h6, stopping knight g5, 
And in this position they've tried all kinds of waiting moves, because typically white wants to see what black does. If he goes knight d4 immediately, black would take, and after let's say bishop takes d4, he could castle here and seems to be okay. Therefore he wants to wait for long castles, well let's say king b1, and then play knight d4, when after takes, bishop takes, is often a double attack against these pawns. So White has tried all kinds of waiting moves in this position. The one played by Grishuk looks very natural, c2, c3 to c4, but has not been seen much. Black has to decide what to do. Castles normally is not ideal because then you're under a kingside attack. Long castles run into this knight d4 trick. Therefore, Yu Yang Yi plays a typical move. Bishop to f6 to control the d4 square one more time. Knight d4 is played anyway, and here Black has to decide what to do. I'm not sure what's best. I'm sure theoreticians will be analyzing this further. One solid option seems to be bishop d4, bishop d4, and then f6, setting up a similar formation to the one we talked earlier, albeit a slightly worse version has to be said. Another option that the computer mentions is the strange looking move knight e5, giving up this bishop. Not sure I'm a fan of that. Yu Yang Yi plays the most natural move, knight takes d4, bishop takes d4, and now he decides not to exchange again, because here he's probably afraid of castling kingside due to the potential white pawn storm. And therefore he decides to play queen to e7, preparing to recapture on f6 with the queen, still keeping his king's options open. Richard goes queen f4, asking this bishop to show his hand, takes takes, and Yu Yang Yi says, you know what, I'm fine playing this endgame, you can double my pawns, but I have a solid position. Probably both have a point here, but Grishuk was later on quite happy with his position and his chances. I also talked to Peter Swidler about this game during one of our Dortmund live shows, and Peter was surprised that Black would allow the pawn structure to get more imbalanced, unbalanced somewhere around here by taking on c4. Maybe it was wiser to go rook b8 than b6 and just defend passively, but keep this structure intact. Yu Ying Yi played bishop c4, but after bishop b7 we can see he has a lot of potential weaknesses and the going already got quite tough. I was impressed that Grishuk did not really bother stopping rook to e2 because he had anticipated that he can always go rook f1, looks passive, but king d1 is coming and this rook would be kicked out. That's what happened in the game after king f1, king d1, the black defense already became very tough. Grishuk pointed out that there was one chance here for Yu Yang Yi to activate or at least exchange this active rook by playing rook b6. Because if you take on a7, then rook c6 all of a sudden is quite awkward. c4, d5, and black is in business. Therefore, after rook b6, white would have had to take on b6. And after both a, b, or c, b, white is better, but the black position remains defendable. This got tougher with this active rook remaining alive. Prishuk, who's always been a great technical player, just improves his position calmly grabs more space with c4, and here after c4, Yu Yang Yi, under pressure, but commits the decisive mistake, plays the move c5, which loses a pawn. Instead it was probably better to just take on e3 and try to hold this, but it's not fun with all the pawn weaknesses and the active white rook. The problem with c5, however, is a very forced sequence. White's, white goes rook d3, takes d6, rook d7 only move, he goes f4, his rook only has one square, rook e4 only move, and he goes rook d5. When, because of the pin along the sixth rank, rook takes c5 is a very serious threat. And it turns out that black has no way to defend all his weaknesses on f5, d6, and c5. Rook d4 check, you would just take and go king d3. This is hopeless. And other than that, you can't stop white from taking either on c5 or on f5. Yu Yi plays king e7, prefers to give the f5 pawn. But this position, where he still has a lot of weak pawns and is now pawned down, is no challenge for a technician and tactician of Grishuk's caliber. Grishuk went on to convert this reasonably smoothly. <clears throat> so victory for Grishuk, who took the lead 2-1, to one, and that means in the last game of the match, Yu Yang Yi, with the white pieces, had to win. Otherwise Grishuk would win the, what was it, $20,000 winner's purse. Yu Ying Yi goes for 1e4 this time around, and Grishuk, who only needs a draw, plays arguably
the most solid opening out there, the Berlin Wall. Yu Yangye is in no mood to allow castles, knight takes e4, plays the move he prefers anyway, the move d3, keeping more pieces on the board. After bishop c5, he decides to go bishop takes c6, which has also been his weapon of choice. White always chooses between c3 castles and bishop c6 here. None of these necessarily give an opening advantage, but I'm sure the discussion is far from over. Takes takes and bishop to e3, Yu Yangyi also has experience with knight d2. This time around he plays bishop e3, asking black which structure he would like, bishop d6, queen d6, queen e7, or bishop takes e3, all playable. Rishu goes for the most standard plan, keeps the two bishops on the board, and typically in these positions black will castle kingside, then put a rook on e8, his knight on d7, either reshuffle his knight to e6, or sometimes play c5, knight b8, knight c6. White has to decide if he wants to castle kingside or queenside, and they've tried many different plans here. Yun Yi goes h3, which normally is a hint that he wants to castle kingside and doesn't want to be bothered with knight g4 or bishop g4, but not in this game, because after queen e2, Yu Yang Yi says, you know what, I was just kidding, I need to win this game, I want to castle queenside after all. The reason that h3 doesn't work so well with that is that typically when they castle queenside, white wants to go for a plan with h4, h5, at least that's what we've seen a lot, and not with h3, g4, but Yu Yang Yi has different intentions. Rook e8, queenside castles. Grishu comes up with quite original maneuver here after g4. He goes knight c5, that's still very typical, king to b1, but now instead of the typical move knight to e6, let's say, or b5 followed by a5, also typical pawn storm, he goes for the move knight to a4, which looks a bit alone there, but Grisha would later mention that Kasparov often liked to play this idea, putting his knight on a4 or h5 and checkmating opponents, and that he once lost to Kasparov when Kasparov did that to him. After knight a4, there's always ideas of bishop to a3 looming. I'm not sure if it's a threat immediately, but Yu Yang Yi rules it out by playing knight to c4. Grisha goes b5, and Yu Yang Yi takes on d6. Taking on d6 might look strange at first sight. Knight a5 is a typical little move in these positions, attacking the c6 pawn. But here it runs into some nice tactics. Bishop to b4, knight takes c6, queen to d6. This knight is kind of trapped and it does not want to take on b4 because after queen b4, there's a fairly nasty double threat. Queen b2 or knight c3 and white is lost. Therefore, Yu Yang Yi takes on d6, and after c takes d6, black gets rid of his doubled pawns, which is always nice, but with opposite colored bishops and kings on different sides of the boards. This position is extremely sharp, and it's gonna be about developing an initiative. Looks to me like black's task is slightly easier, pushing his pawns here, preparing maybe some knight sacrifices. But Yu Yang Yi comes up with a nice resource as well. He starts with the move queen d2, which looks like a defensive move to cover these squares, but it has a hidden idea. After c5, he goes knight to h4. This was prepared by queen d2, because now you cannot take this knight because of bishop to g5, and the queen would be trapped. Knight h4, of course, this knight wants to jump to f5 and hopes that it gets taken there, after which white would have a built-in attack on the g file. Bishop plays b4, c4, Looks a bit strange, but is mentioned by the computer as another interesting way to conduct the attack. But b4 is very typical, attending rook b8 and knight c3 check. Knight f5, of course, you do not take this knight, but you let it be and go queen to e6. Yu Yang Yi now comes up with a way to defend against the black threat of rook b8, followed by knight c3. He plays queen to e2. His intention is the passive looking, but actually decent defense, bishop to d2 so that after knight c3 he can take with the bishop if he really has to. Grishuk decides not to check if this was going to happen with rook b8, but instead to open a new front in the center, plays a move d6 to d5. This is a key moment in this game, very sharp position, where it looks like Yu Yang Yi had to take on d5, and after queen takes d5, black is probably fine, but it looks like the, black, the white defenses are holding for the time being. Bishop to d2, cover that square, Bishop e6 is met by b3. After, let's say, knight c3 check, takes, takes, queen e4. The position is by no means clear. Maybe knight b6 is better, intending a5, a4. 
probably Yu Yang Yi disliked the black attack here and therefore decided not to touch this pawn. But after bishop d2, which was played in the game, d5 to d4, the black position is overwhelming and probably already winning strategically because this knight will land on c3 sooner or later. And then this pawn on c3 defended by his colleague will be such a thorn in the flesh that there's just very little for white to do, especially since his own kingside attack is not exactly far advanced yet. That is pretty much what is going to happen, Grishuk just builds up a completely winning position without any fancy sacrifices. It's a very quiet kingside attack, almost in the style of the old masters, where the counterplay arrives so late that no fireworks or sharp moves are needed. He just puts his piece on the best squares. Queen a6, intending to play bishop to e6, queen d1, and now knight c3. The computer points out that knight takes b2 was already crushing as well. King takes b2 and rook to b5, intending rook a5, bishop e6. But, as I said, Grishuk not really in the mood for sacrifices and we can't count knight c3 as a sacrifice because after b takes c, b takes c. Mate is pretty much imminent after bishop e6 and queen a2. Therefore, Yu Yang Yi had to take this guy with a bishop, b takes c and b3. But this pawn is too much of a pain for white to survive. Grishuk keeps building rook b5, rook a5, forcing the queen to a very awkward square on b1, rook a3, f4, might look like counterplay, but really there's not much happening. This bishop goes to e6, covers the f7 pawn, and then white black just continues his very slow methodical build up. The rook goes to b8, the queen makes way for the a pawn, and the a pawn is the last resource needed to break down the white position. Well, h4, this attack is really not getting anywhere. a5, g5, a4, rook f1. Queen to a7, gets out of the b-file, rook f2, g6, even takes the time to make a luff before opening the position. And the position would indeed open here, because bishop takes b3, pretty much ends the game. Not just pretty much, it does end the game, because Yu Yang Yi resigns here, there was just no defense against this. Which sometimes, to me, is the prettiest attacks. No sacrifices, just maximizing all the pieces. And here, after knight takes b3. Any move wins. Rook a b3, intending, let's say, queen c2, queen a3, followed by rook b2, would be checkmate in no time at all. So Grisha wins the match, three points to one. Quite convincingly, playing two very nice games in the last two games. I'm not sure if we can call them masterpieces, but I thought they were played in the style of the old masters just showing great strategic play. Yu Yang Yi, yeah, was soundly beaten. He said he did learn a lot from this match. Well, Grishuk, I'm sure, will also be happy with winning first prize and the rating gains, which bring him back to number 11 in the world, rated 2778, while Yu Yang Yi falls to 19 at 2743. But I'm sure both sides, I don't know, I was gonna say both sides will be happy. Probably Yu Yang Yi. Won't be that happy. Anyway, was an interesting match. I hope you guys enjoyed it. See you during our next video.